from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary, trees and multiforms. Uh, you might say, what? Multi this, well, it's a Doctor Who reference, but it'll be multi boars coming at you. Multi meanders, because uh, it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to put you to sleep. Hey, before we get to the story here, I just want to remind you that there's resources in the show notes if you're having a tough time right now uh, to global helplines uh, that you can connect with uh, right away uh, if you need some extra support right now or access to more resources. And I'm here to create a safe place. I'm here for you. And I make the show from a place of uh, where I'm trying to be, a be be more empathetic and compassionate and better understanding and in the moment. And I make the show from from a place of caring, and that means uh, caring for everyone in our community. The black members of our community need our care right now. And whether that means uh, taking some uh, external steps or, or looking inward, I want to support you on your journey to support the fact that, that black lives matter. So there's also going to be links to organizations and resources in the show notes. And that's it. These sponsors and our Patreon supporters the way I'm able to bring you this podcast uh, twice a week. Thanks. Uh, hey, everybody, it's, it's Scoots here, and we just passed 900 episodes. Holy moly. And I couldn't do it without you. I do want you to know whether you're new or you're a regular listener, you know, you don't have to support the podcast. You don't have to support the sponsors. And not supporting them is a valid choice, or if you're not in a position to do so, I totally understand that. Those things are optional. Like, uh, usually it's about one out of every hundred people that are listening to this message right now will either become a patron or support a sponsor. And that's really all we need, like one or two out of every hundred people. If it's you that wants to support a sponsor, support the show, that's huge. But if you, if it's not you, that's totally okay. You can make a decision uh, to not support the podcast or, or, or you say, but I'd rather just spread the word about the show, Scoots. That's totally, totally a valid choice. I just want to point that out. Uh, there's no reason, if you, if you can't support the show, you don't want to, that's your choice. It's so I totally respect that. But I do want to say, too, that we wouldn't have gotten to 900 without those people that did take action. Uh, so if you did take action, I want you to feel good about it too. I don't want you to feel bad if you haven't or you chose not to. Or you could say, even if it's just in your heart, hey, thanks to those people that did support the show so it could be here on a regular basis. But if you have spread the word, if you had said, if you've said something nice to me uh, or supportive through email, if you supported a sponsor, if you shared with a sponsor about supporting the show, or you're a patron, or you were a patron, or you thinking about becoming a patron thank you so much like i don't make this podcast on my own i make it with you and i make it for you and i really appreciate it i really appreciate all the support i've gotten over the years if you want to check out our sponsors you can do that sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors and if you want to become a patron sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron but you don't have to. Uh, that's uh, like I work hard so the podcast can be here for you for free. So you could choose to support the show, but you don't have to, right? It's just a choice you can make. It's no big deal. Especially if you're new. You say, what in the heck? Uh, and I say, yeah, well, the podcast does come out twice a week. So I do have to ask. So anyway, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, and uh, here, let's get on with the show. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you to hear. It's where I pop my peas. I talk super fast because it's where I thank the people who supported the sponsors, which some people don't believe, but it's really how I'm able to bring you this podcast twice a week for free. And we got a lot of people to thank. Uh, Celestial Seasonings sponsored the show a few months ago. If you supported them, be sure to let them know. I'd love to have Celestial Seasonings back as a long-term sponsor. It may be one of the most perfect fits for the show so make sure to let them know they should be supporting the podcast or that you supported them uh, because they did and I, a lot of long list here i want to thank alex lola allison scott paul egrup uh Fre freak tet uh, ellie uh holly and anna deborah becca 
Lior, Morella, and Court, all who supported uh, Celestial Seasonings after they sponsored the show. Put them in their Instagram stories or on Twitter and let uh, Celestial Seasonings know they heard about it. So when you support a sponsor, you're supporting the show for everybody. So you should, one, pat yourself on the back. But if you want to up up it, up your support, just uh, tag them on a social media post. Let them know that their partnership with the show is valuable or send them an email, give them a call and let me know about it. And I can try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. Whether it's getting extra help right now, there's going to be links to resources and helplines in the show notes. Uh, you'll see it says Creator Self Care. That's a link to use international helplines and crisis text line. And also uh, to support the black members of our community because black lives matter. Whether you're impacted by racism or you're looking to become an anti-racist, to become a part of the solution, I want to empower you to take those steps. And there'll be links to organizations in the show notes uh, to help you with that. And the last part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is another resource, and it's a book by Ruth King called Mindful of Race. And I want to strongly encourage you uh, to check it out. There'll be a link uh, to Ruth King's website in, in my show notes where you can check out the book and you can learn more. And that's uh, Mindful of Race. It's been an extremely uh, powerful book for me. And uh, so that's the third part of Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Over before we slow it down, Mystery Bard. A lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. And edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators you Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bard. Now we're going to slow it down. Don't forget to subscribe in your podcast app of choice and also make sure your settings are right. Don't turn on any vocal boost or uh, s- smart speeds or silence trimming or anything like that. And make sure you're at 1x or below. You know, can, you can control your speed. But if I sound sped up a lot of times, it's because you got to make sure that your speed settings or your vocal settings are correct. Uh, and that's it. What do you say we get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place uh, where you could set aside uh, whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts you're thinking about, things on your mind from the past, the present, or the future. Uh, Thoughts, uh, feelings, it could be any emotions coming up for you, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations. It could be changes in time or temperature or, uh, you know, other things. It could just be, you know, it could be anything. It really, I've heard from so many people and so many different things, uh, work uh, or, uh, you know, just outside stuff, uh, birds, uh, like I have, a, like, I, I, I guess we should look up what bird brain means, but I'm pretty sure I do uh, because I've been called a bird brain, but I think like a lot of times I would have thought that was not nice, but then I'm like, well, my brain, I think I understand what you're saying. And I think I do actually have a bird brain. But I'll have to come back to that because I'm in the middle of a podcast. I mean, like I'm at the start of a podcast intro. Uh, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a safe place where you could set all that aside. I'm going to smooth it. I'm going to pat it. I'm going to rub it down. I'm going to say safe place. I'm going to try to create space. uh, And then I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. 
I'm going to use a lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. Like, so I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to misspeak. I'd like, uh, probably try to remember what I was supposed to talk about. Oh, bird brain. You know, I'll, I'll follow, I'll try to follow my bird brain around for a little while. And, uh, I guess if I have like, that means most of my, I guess my hair is a bit like a nest. So that's interesting. Mine is like, a, you say, what type of net? Well, a nest made of hay my, would be my hair. That's how a bird, like I'd say, what is that? Is that th- a super thin hay? Uh, that you're like you're nested in. I'd say, yeah, that's m- about my hair. See, I don't know about the structural integrity. I said, don't worry, I got a dome up there, so you could sit on my dome. You'd more be resting in my hair for comfort, but my dome, the dome of my uh, head, would, would support you. Not that I really need an actual bird because I have a bird brain, so I don't need an actual bird like living on top of my head with my hair as a nest. This is just an imaginary exercise. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disappoint you. But you can't fly. So that's like, a new, like uh, do, when you're down, do you go flying? Do you soar? Like, uh, like uh, because I've always wanted to soar on thermals. That comes up every once in a while. But, you know, and then I, but they taught us that myth when I was a kid. And that's pretty much, unfortunately, instead of soaring on thermals, I've just integrated that one lesson. Don't try to soar on thermals or you end up like uh, whatever that kid, not Sisyphus. That's another, that's another mythological character. One of the many I, I try to emulate, unfortunately, that are hardwired into my behavior. And I'm not kidding. That's why I'm laughing. Why can't I think of the names of the, well, I just saw, I think Menelaus was involved in that, but Menel, anyway, oh, Icarus, uh, they say, well, it was the video games that glorified Kid Icarus that really made me buy into that myth. Don't try to soar or you'll end up like Icarus. Don't try. And then as a parent, they say, don't encourage your child to soar. Anyway, this is not good advice. That's just stuff that goes on in my brain. That was just me. That was a pointless meander. Believe me, it was pointless. So if you're new, oh boy, you, do, you were in for an early treat there. You got a little uh, insight into who makes this podcast as we followed my bird brain. And I thought, hey, you're going to soar in a beautiful way. And uh, I guess you soared very close to the earth and there's some droppings there. But if you're new, you might be wondering what in the, what in the bird of hay nest is going on? What in the Sam hay are you talking about? And I'd say, okay, you're right. There's a couple of things I should tell you if you're new. One, that reaction is very normal. Skepticism, doubt when you get to this podcast, a dislike or an unsure, like I'm not sure what flavor this is, is a very natural way to approach this podcast because it's not for everybody. Uh, but it's also very different. So give it a few tries. Try not to listen to this podcast so much or consume it so much as like let it go by like a breeze. You know, like a light breeze, you're like aware of it, but you're not, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to like close the umbrella or whatever, put a rock on the piece of paper. You say, oh, that's a light breeze. Like I'm barely noticeable, like a light breeze. So just like consume the podcast almost like it's out of focus, like you're not really listening to me. You're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, Menelaus, uh, okay, Dr. Zaius, okay. I see, thanks for rhyming there. Um, so that's one thing if you're new. The second thing is give the show a few tries. Most regular listeners just say, hey, it took two or three tries before I got used to the show and realize that it doesn't make any sense, and that's the point. So give it a few tries. Uh, this is a podcast. So it's a podcast you don't need to listen to. Most people don't like it the first time they listen. Those are natural things. It's kind of funny. Uh, but if you stick around, there's a chance you might like it. And obviously, by liking it, the best part is if you like this podcast, you don't barely pay any attention to it and you barely hear any of it. My dad was just telling me that he's proud of me because he never listens to me. Uh, and I say, well, I said, is this a metaphor? And he goes, no, I'm talking about the podcast. Uh, and like, uh, I don't know. That was a, mo- it was a strange moment to share. 
And I said, Dad, Pop, and then, so anyway, that's, but that's true. Like, if you like this podcast, you might barely listen. Now, there is another side to it. This podcast is here to put you to sleep, uh, but in a way of like, I'm here to keep you company as you drift off. But if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here till the very end. The show's about an hour, so you don't got to worry about it. If you can't sleep, I'll be here for an hour. If you fall asleep fast, I'll be here for an hour to keep you company. Or if you wake up and you need me, I'll be here. You can just hit play. Uh, or if you're not sure, you got an hour. you got plenty of time. I'll be here to keep you company. I'm trying to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar bestie, your boar bra. Uh, just kind of see how it goes uh, and say, okay, well, I think I get the idea. So those are a couple of things to know. The other thing that can throw new listeners off is the structure of the show. Uh, now regular listeners, they, they know this part, but it's different every time. Cause I, I explain it in a different way, every single episode. Uh, but here's the structure of the show different than most podcasts or anything you say that resemble, that doesn't really resemble a structure I'm familiar with. And I'd say, are you talking about my nest? My, my hair also does not resemble any structures people are familiar with. Even barbers and beauticians when they see my hair. I remember this. I'm not kidding. I was at somebody's house and this guy was staring at my hair and I didn't know him. Like it was a, like it was a, like a introductory thingamajig where we were all getting together. We shared some common experience and said, oh, let's get together and hang out. Uh, we don't drink. That was a common experience. But so we, uh, he was staring at me for a while and he said, and I said, is there, uh, a way I can talk about this is not awkward. And he said, well, actually, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I have a salon and uh, never seen hair. And I say, yeah, I get it all the time. Believe me, hair professionals are baffled. And he did say whoever had buzzed my hair at that time did a very good job of keeping it even, despite the strange contours of both my head and my hair behavior. So if a bird was to make its home in my hair, I guess what I'm saying is they'd, they'd say, well, structurally, uh, this is an interesting place to live. The structure of this podcast is also interesting and different, which can be off-putting at first. So that's a normal reaction. That's what I wanted to say, but it took me like 10 minutes to say that. And here's the structure. Show starts off with a greeting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary. And when I remember for Doctor Who episodes, trees and multiforms, uh, that's so everybody knows that I'm trying to make you feel welcome and that I'll try to treat you with dignity and respect. And I want you to feel seen, um, if at all possible, or if you'd rather not be seen that I see that. And then I say, just lay low. I'm, I'll pretend you're not, you know, we'll just, we'll just move on. So that's the greeting. Then there's business. There's probably, I don't know, four, six minutes of business or something. That's how we're able to bring you the podcast twice a week. Uh, then there's an intro, which is around 12 to 20 minutes long, which we're in the middle of, where I just try to explain what the podcast is. It's totally separate from the business, uh, uh, but it's like the business of introducing the podcast to new listeners. So you know what you're getting into, and uh, then you say, well, I'm not sure how to feel about what I got into. Just like the bird that lands on my head says, what is this? This isn't like the other human hair I've landed on. You see, no, this is human fur. Not many people have it, but I do. Uh, and then, what was I saying? Oh, oh, the intro. So that's for the new listener. You might be you say, well, I don't understand. But, and then, but the reason the intros are long is it takes me a long time to explain the podcast. But it also so ser serves this, uh, ideally soothes and serves another purpose, which is for the regular listener. It gives you plenty of time to get some distance from the day, to slowly go in for a landing, whether you're getting ready for bed outside of bed, you're doing your skincare routine, you're doing some other gentle activity, maybe your foam rolling. I don't know, maybe you're petting your pets. That's what I always strongly encourage you. You know, maybe you're doodling, knitting, hooking. No, like hooking is like a type of, like, a, like maybe, you do, I don't know, like uh, maybe you're doing something else. Maybe you're give, getting a massage, giving a massage. 
if you're given, like, if you're getting one, I'd say to the other person, thank you, thank you. It's about time, you know, with all your snoring. Uh, or maybe you're just sitting there. Or maybe you're in bed getting comfortable and getting ready to drift off and sinking in. And, you know, gripping, you know, adjusting the pillows and the blankets. So that's the, that's the purpose of the intro is because I don't know if you're like me, but for me, sleep just doesn't come. It takes a while to get there. And the whole part of this podcast is like you're trying to do that in a gentle uh, way that at least feels neutral. If it can't feel enjoyable, that at least it doesn't feel like a drag, which is how it normally feels to me sometimes when I don't have a nice wind down. Now, if you're not into the wind down, most listeners like uh, that aren't into it, the, there's about 2%, according to, it's pretty much statistically, like it is more and more, I see it more and more, about 2% of listeners, they start around 20 minutes. And then people that support the show on Patreon, they get story-only episodes and stuff. So that's, that's uh, I don't know, so that's one thing to know. Uh, Oh, that's the intro. I guess, yeah, so that is one thing to know. Then there's some business. That's just like how we kind of structure things with the podcast. Then there'll be a talk about uh, an episode of Doctor Who. Now, there's a couple of questions you might have. I've never seen Doctor Who. Don't worry. This will be like a bedtime story or a myth. I've seen Doctor Who, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, don't worry. This is going to be very soft and soothing. And not like those archetypal Doctor Who, because I had those archetypal Doctor Who feelings from the 80s. You see, well, I'm a Doctor Who super fan. I'd say, well, see how it goes then. Like, because some Doctor Who super fans, just like Next Generation super fans or Good Place super fans, find the shows very effective. And then some people find, they say, oh, well. It's a good, great that uh, Scoots has the support to put out episodes twice a week. I'll just skip those. But I always recommend giving it a try and seeing how it goes. So that, and then the show ends with some thank yous and good nights as a reminder of the gratitude for everyone that makes this possible. So that's uh, some things to know. The other thing to know, other than I have a bird brain, which means that uh, to me, because I guess I don't know, because to me it sounds like an I-N-S-U-L-T generally, but then I say, well, my bir- like if it's one of those birds that's just hopping around on branches, that's what my brain does all- and my feelings do all day long. So if you mean that, that, uh, that I guess my brain is a bit like a bird brain, and I, I, I accept that, and I'm, I'm uh, trying to observe it in a gentle way. Uh, but the reason I make the show is, I mean, because that's part of who I am. Also part of who I am is I don't, I've had trouble sleeping my whole life, uh, on and off, and I know how it feels in the deep, dark night. That's why I say the deep, dark night. I've been there, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep, uh, all those things, o- other stuff too. So if I can help you, it would be my honor. And, and this podcast doesn't work for everybody. I really wish it did, like, because those of you that say, well, I don't like this show. Uh, I mean, there is sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. Uh, but I wish it worked for everybody because what world we would live in if I, there was just like, uh, but that's just not the reality. So, um, that's the other thing. Uh, oh, the other thing is like, uh, the reason, the other reason I make the show is because you deserve a good night's sleep. I really believe that you deserve a place of rest, a safe place where you can get the sleep you desire and that you need. That would be, that, that's even better. Like uh, if you get the rest you need, you can live your life. And that's really important to me. And it's important for me to point it out every episode that I remember, which is most of them, because I want you to know that uh, and to kind of say, okay. And then even if this podcast doesn't work for you, say, well, maybe tomorrow I'll try that uh, petting my pets more or uh, doodling and maybe you'll find something else that helps. Uh, So I think that's it. I mean, I'm really glad you came and checked the show out. If you're new... Like I said, even if you're doubtful or you don't even think the show will work, uh, the reviews, people say that, regular listeners. So I would say maybe you have nothing to lose. Give it a few tries and then see if it doesn't work for you. 
But I'm really glad you're here. I really appreciate you coming by and checking this show out. Uh, and I really want to help. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive. Thanks again for coming by. I really want to help you fall asleep. And these are a couple of ways we're able to bring this show on a regular basis. Hey, before we get to the story here, I just want to thank you for listening to the podcast and let you know if you're new or you're a regular listener, like uh, listening to the podcast is a huge help and uh, you don't need to do anything more to support the podcast unless you want to and you're in a position to do so. And if you can't support the show or you don't want to, like you say, well, I'd support the show for free and let people know about it or, uh, you know, just, 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 you know, follow you on social media. That's a huge help. That is spreading the word about the show is huge, but also choosing saying, you know what? I don't want to support. I just want to listen to the podcast and put me sleep. That's a valid choice too. Or you say, you know what, Scoots, I got a lot going on. And I say, I get it. Believe me, totally. I just want to point out that not supporting the show is a valid choice. It's as valid as those of you that do choose to support the show. And you really should only support the podcast. One, if you choose to, you're in a position to do so. You say, man, I want to get one of those Air Doctor air purifiers. Or, man, I want to save up. I want to get my nephew the Kiwi, Kiwi so Co subscription. I want to get my neighbor's daughter that Kiwi Co subscription. Or I want to be a patron. I want to listen to ad free episodes episodes or I want more content or I just want to pay for a free podcast because I'm a rebel. Both choices, supporting the show and not supporting the show are valid. And I want to point that out and I want to say that, yeah, like literally it's just like one out of every hundred people that are, that hear this message, that, that, that then the show can be free for the other 99 people. That's the wonderful thing about this. And, you know, I do have to, 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 to keep these messages going to get the message to that person that is in a position to support the show. But for the other 99, you just kind of got to listen and, and, and hear me say this and say, I'm not in a place to take action, Scoots. I respect that too. So if you want to support the show, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsor or sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patrons or just let somebody know about the podcast. And if you don't want to support the show or you're new or you don't care, I respect that too, totally. Uh, thanks, everybody. And here comes the story. All right, everybody. It's uh, Scoots here. We're talking episode five. Uh, the e uh, recap, the ECAP, I was going to say, is running on the screen up here. Uh, it's a two-parter from episode four. This one is called Evo Evolution. I don't know. Is that how that was? Evolution of the Dal Daleks. Uh, uh, but there's a recap at the beginning uh, with all the things like, which basically, oh, yeah, I should give you, uh, let me run through this recap. It's a really fast one as far as they do it well. It's, the, uh, it's just a series of shots. Um, so let's do a live recap if I can keep up uh, in a slow way. Starts with the doctor and Martha at the um, Empire State Building talking. Lady Liberty, uh, Roaring Twenties to Lul on stage. Uh, Hooverville, uh, Porky Pig, Tallulah, Dalek, uh, Empire State Building, Plans and Dalek, Workers, uh, this guy. In the pinstripe suit, uh, he merges uh, and becomes a human Dalek. Uh, uh, still dislikes comic books. He, he looks at everybody. Everybody looks at him. Holy moly, I am a human Dalek or a Dalek human. And uh, that's it. The episode opens. Uh, and let's see. This one is by Helen Rayner again. Uh, Episode five, uh, and uh, right now the the beginning's running for me. Okay, so then uh, Dalek Sec, the now human Dalek, is talking. He says, "Prepare everybody. These humans are going to be just like me." And Martha says, "What are you doing?" Uh, and then, uh, like uh, the mu they start to hear some music. Uh, and they say, what is that a number? The doctor's near Bunsen. You old Bunsen, not Bunsen Honeydew, uh, but the Bunsen from your school labs. He says, hey, it's me. Uh, he makes eye contact, uh, power cells, joke. Uh, let me see what it says. Pulls on his ear. He's playing around. Uh, but basically, he says, they say, it's the doctor. Uh, you know, the, the person the Daleks don't get along with at all. 
And they said, let's get rid of them. And Dalek Sec, human, human Dalek Sec, uh, like Squidward says, uh, wait a second. And the doctor says, amazing, you're a new form of Dalek. Very clever, fascinating. And uh, he says, yeah, we called cult to Scarrow, dodged you. He goes, what are you doing in 1930? And they say, emergency temporal shift. Uh, which is actually important because, uh, and I guess that takes a lot of power because the doctor says, oh, that must use up like a, po- a lot of power because uh, otherwise you would have taken things over uh, instead of being in the lab. And Sex says, I'm a Dalek in human form. He goes, what's that like? Uh, he goes, Dalek Sec, right? Uh, SEC? He goes, you got a name and a mind of your own. What are you thinking? And he says, I feel humanity. And the doctor says, that's good. And he goes, well, not the, not, he goes, all the other side of humanity. And the doctor goes, well, that's not humanity. And he goes, I think it is. He goes, he goes at the heart of your heart or, the, or their hearts is a very Dalek. Uh, and then the doctor changes. He goes, okay, so what are you up to anyway? He goes, uh, he goes, I can show you wh- what you're missing with this radio. And then it's hilarious. One of the Daleks says, what is the purpose of this device? And the doctor says, exactly. What is the purpose? Plays music. What is the purpose of music? Oh, sing, dance, fall in love. Uh, like, it, it, it's just hilarious. And uh, they, they, they say, uh, he goes, unless you're a Dalek, then it's just noise. But I, I put that, what is the purpose of the device? And no one, the doctor has it uh, go, go on like one tone uh, that none of the Daleks like. Uh, no, like it, hurt, it bothers their ears uh, and the Porky Pig cartoon figures they've created. So the doctor said, get out of here. Then the Daleks say, watch, protect a do- hybrid uh, uh, Dalek sec. Uh, so they all take off. Laszlo stays behind with the Porky Pigs. Oh, so Laszlo was Tallulah's uh, boyfriend, but he became a Porky Pig uh, cosplayer. Kind of cartoon, human cartoon. Uh, tough to explain, but you you know what I mean. They said, well, we're going to make you into a cartoon figure that dislikes comic books. Because the reason, one of the dog's purposes in the human world is just to get rid of uh, comic books. Uh, Dalek says, geez, I don't know if I've felt this, uh, cause I was so used to being in that robot shell. This, my ears are, uh, not liking that music. The, and they say the doctor got away and he says, go find the doctor. And then they say, yeah, find the doctor and get everybody else. Uh, then they run to Tallulah Laszlo, uh, music sounds like, uh, inspector, uh, all is calling uh, oh inspector hall is calling that's what the chanting of the music sounds like over and over inspector hall is calling like if you listen to the background chanting music inspector hall is calling sounds like what they're chanting over and over again and even in my notes when i was reading it just now you heard it, i said inspector hall is calling what does that mean i must not be able to read my writing no that's what the, you thought they were saying over and over again Inspector Hall is calling. Uh, then Doctor says, come on. He, then Dalek Di- Sex looks at the busted radio that the doctor dropped. He pets it. Uh, and he says, man. Uh, and then the, the uh, doctor and everyone is going up. And meanwhile, they're going up the uh, into the theater, I think, uh, or somewhere. They're going up a ladder. Oh, not to the theater, no. And they say, the humans have ascended, return to base. Then the Daleks stop. This is another great classic, I mean, in my opinion, a classic scene. Because uh, they stop and they have a conversation. Just like, just a couple of Daleks talking. Like, if I could have been there when they pitched this, I would have, they said, well, what's the next part of this, micro part of the scene like? Uh, just a couple of Daleks talking, you know, subtextually, but they can't really do that. Uh, looking around talking doubts uh because the first dalek says uh, hey can i request some information what's your opinion of dalek sec and uh, the daleks th- talk about subcommunication or whatever dalek three says what we're, we're supposed to follow him and dalek one says well i can read subtextually that you have doubts uh 
And then they look around like, is anybody listening? And then Dalek 3 says, affirmative. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, then we're back in Hooverville. Uh, and Solomon is uh, saying, what are these, like, these Daleks? And they go, yeah, they're mixing with humans. Uh, and uh, they got a Dalek human down there. And they're coming here uh, to Hooverville. And he says, that's rough because Hooverville's where you go when you don't have anywhere else to go. Uh, and doctor says, well, you got to go somewhere else. And he goes, dude, did you not listen to me? Uh, doctor goes, well, take the railroads, get out of state. Uh, and he goes, I got a reason with them. And Martha says, no. And Frank says, no. And the doctor says, uh, he goes, they're vulnerable now, so they're going to be even more troublesome. Uh, then we see that the Porky Pig characters are coming. They see someone says, cartoon-like beings, the porky pigs are coming towards us. Uh, they're, they're strange. It's strange. Uh, and the doctor says, see? And then Selma says, all right, everybody get ready. And they say, all right, everybody. Uh, and then Selma says, we got to stick together. And then Martha says, we got to get out of here. And the doctor says, too late. They're trying to, they're, we're surrounded. Uh, and then Tulul says, yep. Uh, and the uh, psalmist says, again, uh, we'll stay together. And Martha says something strange, which uh, she says, if we could just hold off till daylight, uh, which I didn't understand. The doctor goes, oh, no. And then one of the Dalek uh, comes forward and Solomon says, what in the heck? And everybody, you know, none of these humans have seen a Dalek before, so it kind of blows their minds. And uh, like, holy moly. And then they try to stop the Daleks, which doesn't work. Uh, then Dalek Sec is in the, um, let's see, visual contact command. Oh, yeah. Then he he says uh, Dalek Sec is back in the lab, or Dalek Human Sec. He says establish visual contact. Uh, uh, so he's watching through the other Daleks. He says uh, commence. Uh, and then they, the, the Martha says, there's more than one Dalek in the sky. And then they, the Daleks start flowing around and they say, we've located the doctor. Because uh, the doctor says, what are you doing, man? This isn't right. Uh, then we go to a commercial. When we come back from the commercial, uh, let's see, Sec is saying, um, he's saying, geez, look at these uh, humanity. Like, they're so courageous, these humans. Uh uh, to the other Daleks, which really don't want to hear it. Uh, then Solomon tries to win the Daleks over. He goes, hey, you're outcasts. I'm outcast. We're, you know, we're all outcasts. Uh, can't we stick together? You know, Aren't we the same underneath? Uh, he goes, I didn't realize that the universe was a thousand times the size I thought it was. He goes, yeah, that's a bit overwhelming, but it's got to also give me hope. Uh, hope that together we can make a better tomorrow. So I beg you now, if you have any compassion in your heart, just meet with us and stop this. What do you say? And the Daleks say the only thing they can say, which is erase all humans in comic book readers, which is their new thing. Uh, uh, so uh, they try to, they use a giant eraser on Frank, uh, Solomon, and he says, oh boy. Uh, then the doctor goes out. He says, all right, da Daleks. He goes, why don't you race me then? Uh, and they say, yeah, like, yeah, that'd be great. Cause you're like the one number one uh, person, uh, anti a Dalek, a doctor. And he goes, okay, well just erase me then Daleks. And he's calling out sec who's watching. He says, stop. Uh, Dalek three says, I do not understand. This is the doctor. And Sex says, yeah, we got to bring him in. And the Dalek 3 says, no, don't understand, cannot compute. Uh, and Sex says, yep, I, I command it, so you must obey. And he says, oh, I obey. The doctor's like, what in the hay? Like, even he doesn't believe it. Uh, and they say, bring him in. Uh, like, uh, And the Dalek says, everybody follow me, or the doctor, you follow me. Martha goes, yeah, you can't go. And the doctor goes, you have to. Daleks change their mind. They never change their mind. Martha goes, what about us? And, and, and uh, he goes, yeah, I'll go with you. you got to leave all these humans alone, though. So the Dalek sex says, okay, leave humans alone. They will be spared. Uh, then, uh, Martha and the doctor, Martha's doctor, don't go, uh, you know, he goes, Oh, I gotta go. You stay here and help people. But then he does a fake out. He goes, thank you very much. Uh, and he shakes her hand and gives her a, a what well, I thought was a note, but it's a psychic paper. 
Uh, then we're back at the Dalek lab, and the, one of the Daleks says to the sick, what'd you save the doctor for? He goes, he's a genius. We need him. Our future depends on him. Uh, then there's cleanup at Hooverville. Uh, and then, uh, like, uh, Tallulah is boiling water. Martha says, okay, like, uh, and she, 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 she and I, mean, I don't think Frank's there yet. But he goes, she goes, what are we going to do? Tallulah so says to Martha, he goes, well, the doctor gave me this paper. He's got a reason. She goes, what is it? She goes, I can go in places. Uh, he wants me to go somewhere, but where? What am I supposed to do? So she's got her own mystery to solve. Uh, then the dial doctor is very upset with Dalek Sec. He goes, what are you doing bothering humans? Uh, why'd you erase a human? Uh, it's not a cartoon. He goes, is that all you know how to do? And the Dal Dalek Sec says, uh, yes, so I'm sorry. Uh, that was wrong. He goes, yeah, that was courageous. Uh, the doctor says, are you, saying, are you apologizing and saying courage is good? He goes, yeah, excellent. And he says, are you becoming a little human? He says it very loudly. And uh, the sex says, you're the last of your kind. I'm the first of mine. And he goes, well, what do you want? He goes, well, uh, he goes, we've been working really hard in this age we're in, uh, but we haven't had any success. Uh, and uh, we, the humans are one of the big re This is, again, like pro-humanism. Uh, he goes, humans are the greatest resource of this planet. And the planet Earth went, <laughs> uh, uh, but he, he, then he shows like this Matrix moment that they have. Like they said, also, we saw the movie The Matrix. So this is what we got going, human energy, pure energy, like that song from the 80s. And uh, the doctor goes, so that's what you're up to? And they go, yeah, well, we're going to download uh, Dalek stuff into these humans, uh, just like the Matrix. He goes, the Matrix is powering things. And he goes, yeah, we're going to download our, our Dalek ideas into their brains. Uh, and he goes, really? And they go, they go, how many? He goes, oh, more than a thousand. Uh, and he goes, that's going to take a lot of plant power. This planet hasn't even split the atom. So what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, and it was very, uh, like that movie with, uh, um, Dr. Frank, uh, you know what I mean? Friend, kind of like, not Frank and Furter, but it, like, uh, the other, like, uh, Dr. Frank, where it's like, uh, he, it's, it's A-L-I-V-E. Uh, uh, then we go back, uh, to Martha and Tallulah talking about, uh, wait a second, energy. Martha's still trying to conduct her Dalekanium. Uh, Dalekanium, where would it be? And then he go, get Frank. And they say, Frank, what were you doing? What was all the work for? He goes, we're working on buildings, uh, like that building. Uh, and that gives kind of like a light bulb goes off inside of Martha. And there's a break. Uh, okay, so then we come back from the break and the doctor is talking to uh, SEC. Okay, Empire State Building. Okay, what's going on with that? Uh, He's like, oh, we got to go. He goes, let me explain. He goes, doctor, do you know about DNA and RNA and codes? Uh, and the doctor goes, a sigh. He goes, what about gamma and solar flares? The doctor goes, uh, yeah, I've heard of them. I'm pretty familiar. And he goes, well, I need your genius. Uh, because he says, uh, like, uh, he goes, okay, for, for, he goes, for, because uh, the doctor says, what do you need me for? He goes, well, you're a genius. So he goes, Daleks are intelligent but emotionless. Uh, and I goes, well, emo removing emotions is what your creator thought, that you were stronger. And Dalek sex says, the creator was wrong. And the doctor goes, well, well what? Uh, and meanwhile, I think the Dal other Daleks are hearing this. And he goes, uh, he goes, it makes us lesser than our enemies. Uh, he goes, also, you know, he goes, we need body and heart. Uh, and he goes, but you wouldn't be a supreme being anymore. And Dalek Six says, yeah, that's good. And then the other Dalek says, um, no, that's incorrect. Uh, and Dalek Three says, yeah, Daleks are supreme. And Dalek Six says, not anymore. And and uh, Dalek Six says, uh, by, or Dalek Three says, uh, yes, it is. That's our purpose. And then Sex says, well, that's wrong. He goes, so, so being, he goes uh, where did that lead us? Uh, living in this uh, below the Empire State Building, or just the four of us, uh, we have to change and adapt. Uh, and the Dalek says, so let me get this straight. And on behalf of the other Daleks, you want me to change everything that makes a Dalek a Dalek? 
Also, I thought I put, he says just four of us left. And I, I think it was like, uh, three, you're not a Dalek, dude. Yeah, the doctor seems like he's shocked. Then we're in the elevator with Tallulah, Frank, and Martha. She has a psychic paper. She's kind of trying to explain it to them and how it works. And then we got to go to the top of the building. Uh, then we go back down to the lab, uh, where it's like, okay, we got to make these more human, uh, cause you got an I he goes, you understand this stuff. Uh, we got to get ready before the solar flare yeah, and the doctor says, okay, so what's the template? And he goes, well, I want to make it, the change it up, uh, make it more, make them more, make these humans more human. And the doctor goes, what about the, they, they're not going to let you do that. Uh, right, right. All other Daleks and Dalek six says, I'm the leader. And the doctor says, so you're going to just listen to this guy, Squidworth, who's not even Dalek anymore. And they go, we follow orders. Dalek said commands, we obey. The uh, Dalek six says, doctor, if we don't, if you don't help me, we're not going to change. Uh, and Dalek says, where are you going to, or Dalek says, where are you going to put all these uh, human Daleks? Because uh, you ain't going to put them on Earth. They like comic books on Earth. Daleks don't. Uh, and Dalek Sex says, put us in the TARDIS and bring us somewhere new. And the doctor says, okay, how long have I got? They go, 11 minutes. And he goes, okay, oh boy, let me get to work then. Uh, then we're at the top of the world, the top of the world, as Tulula says. They look at the plans for the Empire State Building, and then they start looking at revisions. Oh, this revision has today's date. Uh, Tulula looks out on a very New York uh, skyline. No wonder they came here, she says. Uh, then we get to like a sequence with the fun, uh, when, you know, when the doctors are like very frenetic, uh, working, uh, at a high energy. But then he says, what about all these forky pig cartoons you made? Uh, like, uh, the, he goes, uh, the, the, he goes, cause we're, I'm working on the style like human things. We need chromatin solution. He sees Laszlo. He goes, where, where are these forkies in, in the plan? And he goes, oh, they fade. He goes, oh, oh, oh. he goes, it's real r r drawing, so it's just going to fade away eventually. And he goes, let's get to work. Uh, and the doctor says, Laszlo, man. He goes, I got to put a stop to this. Uh, I'm sorry that you're a cartoon now. And Laszlo goes, do you think this Dalek sec Scootworth is up to something good or not good? And the doctor goes, I, he goes, people can change history. Right idea, right uh, right time. So I got to believe it for now. Uh, then Frank and Tallulah and Martha are look, working on the bl bl blueprints. Frank takes a look around. Storm's coming. Martha says, I wish the doctor was here. You know, he'd help. Uh, and then Tallulah says, so when did you first meet him? And she goes, well, it was at work. Uh, and she explains to Martha or Tallulah that she's a, doc, a physician and, uh, and, uh, Tallulah goes, oh, what a partnership that would be. She goes, that doctor, he goes, she, she, she's different. He's different, huh? And Martha goes, you got no idea. And then Tallulah mentions that he's a human, a man. Uh, and and uh, Martha goes, well, she thought of something, but she goes, he had this other companion uh, for a while and not anymore. And now he's on his own. And sometimes when he talks to me, I think he's looking at me. And then sometimes I'm going to think he's looking at her or remembering her. And Tallulah goes, uh, well, he, she goes, reality check. My boyfriend is a cartoon uh, porky pig now. So, uh, and Martha goes, well, the doctor's on the case. So maybe we'll all be okay. And Tallulah goes, I can't believe those Daleks turned uh, the Laszlo into a cartoon. Uh, then there's another commercial break, uh, uh, which, uh, but it's an interesting point, I guess, cause, uh, Tulu's kind of just saying, you know, I, I don't, I'm fed up with these Daleks too. Uh, then we go back to the lab. The doctor's like, all systems glow, go. He wears, uses a glass plunger, which I thought was cool. Like you got everything going here, uh, tubes with goo and goop, uh, power switches, uh, music, uh, it's, uh, almost time. It was 11 minutes. Let's see. All feeds ready. Solar flare ready. Uh, breakers on, uh, we're ready. Uh, then we go, uh, 
Martha figures out, okay, there's something new on, on the top of the building, Dalectanium or whatever. Uh, then we're back at the lab and this like thing goes off and uh, it's a blinking light. And the doctor goes, what's that blinking light? And, and the sec goes, what do you mean? Uh, that's a blinking light that says it's not uh, properly functioning. And the do- do- doctor says, it's an override. And the sec says, no, it can't be overridden. I'm in charge. Uh, and the, one of the docs says, doctor, step away from the uh, control panel. And Sex says no, and they say, "Yeah, you're, you're, both of you are now in trouble." We consider you comic book readers, which is outlawed. And uh, he goes, "I'm the commander." And they go, "You've lost your authority. You're no longer a Dalek." And the doctor goes, "What are you doing to these? Uh, what, what are you downloading?" And they go, "100 percent Dalek into human brains." And then they say, "Porky's like, take these two under advisement." Uh, but Laszlo goes to the doctor, and Sex says, I can't believe this. Uh, and then they say, solar flare coming. And they get lucky because the elevator's there. And the, Laszlo says, doctor, the lift's here. So they jump on the elevator. Uh, and and the, the, all the docs say, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and the elevator door closes, they go up. And Lazo says, my, I'm fading, doctor. My, my cartoon is fading. And he goes, we just got to get to the top of the building. Uh, meanwhile, the, at the lab, they're busting. They say, uh, listen, Dalek Sec, you're no longer in charge. Uh, you told us to imagine, and we imagined your irrelevance. Uh, then the... Um, the doctor gets to the top floor, uh, and Martha and Tallulah, you know, it's all happy for a second. Uh, a lot of hugs. Uh, Martha says, there's Dalectanium on the top of the building. Oh, good to see you. And he says, oh, come here. And they give each other a big huggy poo. Still imagine that irrelevance is so good. Uh, and he goes, oh, that's a good, he goes, uh, or maybe they did more than hug. Uh, he goes, oh, I love hugging you. And they go, well, what's going on? He goes, he goes okay, well, we got to figure this out. Uh, Six minutes. I'll get the dolectanium off. Uh, gamma something. Uh, blimey. Because that's pretty high to climb up. Uh, look out over the city. Martha goes, what's up there? Uh, and three pieces of dolectanium to get off. Uh, you got to head up. The doctor goes, I'll head up there. And he goes, you'll have your hands full. You got to, because they're going to send the, the, you know, the elevator. I, I forgot to turn it off. Uh, uh, New York, then there's climbing music, uh, sonic action with the doctor. There's also a storm. Uh, we see the uh, Porky's taking the lift, ready. Uh, they all have giant erasers, so they say, we're going to erase some stuff. No cartoons in this business. Uh, uh, the, the, like all the Daleks are giving out orders. Uh, the doctor's working on getting the dolectanium off. He gets one off. Martha says, okay, the lift's coming. And Laszlo says, I'll take care of it. But then he's like, Martha says, no, 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 I'm helping too. But then Laszlo says, oh, no, my cartoon's fading. So we see his cartoon is fading. But he says, don't worry about it. And Tallulah says, what's going on? He goes, don't worry. Uh, but I better sit down because the cartoon fading. And Frank goes, we can't even... What are we going to do? Uh, Martha goes, let me brainstorm. And then she goes, the storm. Maybe we could channel the storm. And, and she goes, cartoons, rain, uh, like the rain gutters. We'll use the rain gutters against them. And she goes, let's grab some stuff, Frank. Come on. Uh, and then uh, the dogs are counting down 39, 40, 39, 38, 37. Doctor's still working. He ends up dropping his, he's really working hard. The doctor, the task is beyond the doctor, which is rare. Let's see what else we have. So he loses his sonic screwdriver. Uh, then uh, Martha starts to enact her plan. She, they're using like uh, everything they can to get water headed towards the opening of the elevator from the rain. 
Uh, we're watching the doctor working. We're watching the elevator climb on floors. We're watching the Daleks counting down to zero, 12, 11, 10. Uh, so everything's coming to a crew, like a peak here. Uh, then it starts really raining hard. Uh, the doctor has, to, there's a gamma. So the doctor doesn't, he has to give up on getting the dolectanium off and hold on and absorb some of the gamma stuff. Uh, but some of it goes down to the lab. Uh, the Daleks are like, oh boy, this worked. Uh, all of the um, Porky's got erased because Do- uh, Martha's plan washes them all with rainwater. And like a lot of rain, it was really raining. So they all get washed away. And, but she goes, Jesus, you like this. I don't know how I feel about this. And then they go, what about the doctor? Uh, oh wait, but I think there was an, uh, yeah. After they washed the, the Daleks. So they say, what about the doctor? The doctor's sleeping. That's when it goes to a commercial. And then when it comes back from the commercial, we'll see here. What do we got? Uh. Uh, okay, all the Daleks are lined up with their uh, new recruits. Uh, like uh, they talk, they're humans, but they talk exactly like Daleks. Uh, they say, "You will identify." They say, "I am a Dalek," uh, and he says, "Go out to all the comic book stores and take all the comic books. Uh, that get ready." Uh, then Martha's like, "Doctor, we found your sonic screwdriver. You're getting careless." He goes, "Oh man." Uh, gamma stuff uh and they go he goes hey great you're great too and she goes well, what happened there's still dolectanium up there he goes oh don't worry about it uh uh then one of the daleks says uh we're back there they see dalek uh, one of the Daleks says to dalek sec i'm in charge now i'm designated controller dalek sec says i used to be that and they, it goes you are unfit uh it says i'll coordinate everybody and the Dalek, or do, then we're back with the doctor. Uh, we see uh, New York City again. And the doctor goes, we got to stop them. They're going to get rid of all the comics in New York City, the comic, one of the comic capitals of the world. Uh, uh, and then uh, he says, I got to think. I got to think here. And he goes, I got it. He goes, I got in the way. So he goes, some of the gamma, he goes, uh, so we got to think, 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 uh, some space somewhere out of the way. He goes, Tallulah. She goes, that's me. Three L's and an H. Uh, he goes, can we get in the theater? She goes, yeah. And then the doctor goes, is there another elevator? And Martha goes, yeah, the uh, uh, service elevator. And then the doctor says the famous Olanzi, uh, uh, I think I'm saying it correct. All on Z, uh, uh, and they all go into action. Then the Daleks, uh, are like report maximum efficiency, get rid of the comic books, everybody get ready. And then they're in the theater, uh, the doctor, Martha, Frank and Tallulah and Laszlo. Laszlo says it's still fading. Martha's trying to help Laszlo. Uh, Tulul's like, why are we doing, what are we doing in here? Uh, and he goes, the, the first thing, he goes, they may dislike comic books, but they dislike me more, so I'm going to tell them where I am. So he turns on a sonic screwdriver. We go back to the Daleks who are like, the doctor's still around? Holy moly. You got to be kidding me. Uh, so, uh, the, like they say, uh, doctor says, okay, everybody stay calm. Yeah, and the Daleks are like, don't go for the comic books. Go get the doctor, human Daleks. Uh, the doctor says, you, Frank, go back to Hooverville. Martha goes, no. And the doctor goes, that's an order. She goes, what are you, a Dalek? Order me around. But then all the Dalek humans come in, or the Daleks that are do- human downloaded Daleks. Uh, and the doctor goes, well, all right. And Martha goes, are those humans with Dalek downloads? Uh, and he goes, that's when he says, stay calm, just stay here. Then this uh, sequence is a little strange because Laszlo goes, well, what about the, Dal- the D- Dalek Daleks? Uh, then they very dramatically appear on stage with uh, smoke and stuff and music. Uh, and they're making Dalek sec crawl. Uh, which was strange. And then the, one of them says, the doctor will stand before the Daleks. 
And they say, this is the beginning of a new age, Doctor, not the age of Aquarius, the end of the comic age. Uh, planet Earth will become a new scaro, land free of comics and imagination, except for our familiarity with Porky Pig, which was mostly Dalek Sec anyway. And the doctor says, oh, what a world will that be? Uh, and he goes, he goes, isn't that Dalek Sec in front of you? The cleverest Dalek ever? And look what you've done to him. He goes, is this your new empire? The foundation for a whole new civilization? Uh, treating a former Dalek with disrespect? And then uh, Sec says, if you choose this, Daleks, uh, then this will choose you. You know, the, kind of like a reverse golden rule or something. And they say, incorrect, we always, you know, we'll always get rid of comics. Uh, but first, we're going to get rid of the doctor. And he goes, but he can help you, Dalek Sex says that. And they go, no, erase the doctor, erasers ready. And he goes, don't do it. And then they go to erase the doctor with their sonic erasers, but the Dalek Sex gets in front of it. Yeah, so he gets erased. Uh then it's the doctor speech time. He goes, this is your leader. He goes, the one that w would have led you out of uh, the deep, dark night. And he goes, what did you do? But he's really saying it on behalf of the human Daleks. Uh, he goes, can't you see your mistake? Uh, and then the Dalek says, humans show increased levels of serotonin. Well, also, there's clamshell light holders on the stage, I noticed. Uh, and then the doctors go, okay, well, the he goes, is this going to be a baptism for Dalek humans with uh, dislike of comic books and erasers? Uh, why don't you have them erase me then? And Dalek 3 says, prepare erasers, humans. And he goes, go ahead, tell them to erase me. And they say, erase the doctor. But none of the humans do. And then they say, erase the doctor. Obey. Dalek humans will obey. And then Martha says, what? And then the Dalek says, well, you listen up. You're supposed to follow. Why aren't you following orders? And one of the humans says, why? And it says, Daleks do not question orders. And it's, it's like a kid. It says, but why? And it says, you will stop this. And it says, the human says, but why? And it says, you must not question this. Like, this does not commute, compute. Uh, and then they say, yeah, but you're not in charge of us. We're not just Daleks. And the doctor says, no, you're not, and you never will be. He goes, well, you got a little Time Lord DNA in you, just a little bit of freedom. And then they go, okay, uh, then we'll erase everybody. The Daleks say that. And the doctors, then there's an eraser off. Uh, and actually, uh, the two Daleks that are up there, they get erased. Uh, and then they like end up the other other Dalek that's not there uh, uses like the they say he says get rid of the humans with sonic uh, the human Daleks with a sonic eraser, a sonic sound eraser. Uh, uh, so there's like this whole thing, and, and then it ends up you know no when like with where you erased a whole paper of work. Uh, yeah, so they say, well, that failed. Uh, and the doctor says, I can't believe that. Uh, you shut down all of the new. And the doctor goes, that was a new kind of human Dalek Time Lord being. And you just erased it. And then Lazo says, that was only two Daleks. There must be one Dalek somewhere. And the doctor goes, oh, yeah. In the whole universe, just one. Uh, then there's an ad break. I guess I, maybe I thought the ad break was somewhere else. But. Uh, then the doctor goes down there, hands in his pockets, duster on. And he goes, hey, what's up? And the Dalek, one Dalek says, You're gonna, I'm going to uh, erase you still. And the doctor goes, yeah, 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 yeah. He goes, well, what's your name anyway? He goes, Dalek Khan. And he goes, like the movie, the Star Trek movie, the best Star Trek movie, or one of the best? And he goes, yeah, yeah. And he goes, what's your name? He goes, Dalek Khan. I just said that. He goes, sorry about that. I was just on Scoots' notes there. And he goes, right now, you, you, there's no more called a Scaro. You're the only one. And I'm the only person in the universe that might show you some compassion. 
And he goes, Dalek Khan, let me help you. What do you say? And he says, emergency temporal shift, uh, which is a callback. And then he temporal shifts, you know, to a random, you think it's like a random like thing where you can temporal shift in time and space, but you don't know where you're going to end up. Uh, emergency temporal shift. Then Laszlo's fading more and more. Uh, and Martha's like, doctor, you got to help. Uh, and she goes, it's okay, Laszlo. Uh, and Tallulah goes, what is it? What's going on? He's fading away. And Laszlo goes, this is what happens to cartoons written, you know, and, and temporary ink. Tallulah, Laszlo says that. She goes, what do you mean? And he goes, we're made with uh, non-permanent ink. Uh, and she goes, no, 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 doctor, you got to do something. And at first you see, like, the doctor kind of fakes this up. Do you think he's going to give a, like, try to comfort him? Because, oh, Tallulah with three L's and an H, watch me. And then he goes into super frantic doctor mode. He goes, got this huge lab. Uh, he goes, Laszlo, hold on. And he gets to work. Uh, too much, you know, too much erasing today. We're going to permanize your ink, Laszlo. Ink and pen. Uh, he goes, brand new beings, wise people. He goes, I'm telling you right now, no more. No more erasers today. He goes, Tallulah, step aside. The doctor is in. Which is a pretty fun classic line. So action hyper doctor. Then we see New York City again. Central Park. Uh, Frank comes. Who would later be in New York City, I guess, is a different uh, character. Uh, and he says, geez, I talked to everybody. I told, told him what Solomon would have said, uh, that a cartoon could live here among us. Uh, he goes, I even had to, you know, put a couple people in line. He goes, Laszlo, you're well, you and Tulul are welcome here. He goes, people are going to stare because you're a cartoon uh, that's not inside a TV or a movie screen or a movie screen because I don't think they had TVs. But he goes, that's what Hooverville's about, is sticking together for people, you know, this is where we all kind of stick together. And Laszlo says, geez, uh, thanks so much. Uh, uh, yeah, Hooverville was out, it was for, if you don't have any other options. Uh, then the episode ends back at Lady Liberty uh, with the doctor and Martha uh, and Martha goes, do you think it's going to work out those two? And doctor goes, I don't know anywhere else in the world. Uh, I don't know, but New York, he goes, uh, that's what the city's good at. Tired, poor huddled masses, and even a cartoon Dalek, uh, being And Martha goes, the cartoon in the show girl. And the doctor goes, the cartoon porky pig in the show girl. And Martha goes, it just proves it. I suppose there's someone uh, for everyone. And the doctor kind of mumbles. You can barely, I couldn't hear it at first, but he says, maybe. And Martha goes, geez, I'm sorry. And, uh, the doctor goes, for what? And she goes, she goes, that one Dalek, uh, and he goes, what do you mean? And she goes, well, I knew it was important to you. And he, do you think we'll ever see it again? And he goes, one day, maybe. Then they get in, he, he opens the door while they're talking. And she goes into the, TARDIS, and then the doctor goes in the TARDIS behind her, and uh, the episode comes to a close. Uh, good night. All right, I want to thank everybody who supported the show on Patreon. I want to thank Sarah, Jeff, and Kristen. Thanks, 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 and good night. Anna, Julie, and Mischief. Thanks, 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 thank you, thanks, good night. Cerise, uh, Melissa, and Baylor. Thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, Cornelia, Rachel, and Ivan. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Melissa, Aisha, and Jane. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Carissa, Susan, Maggie, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Cynthia, Tina, and Jessica, thanks, 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 and good night. Jeff with a G, Lane, and Tina, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Mary, Jasmine, and Isabel, thanks, 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 and good night. Devin, Cassie, and Hans, thanks, 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 and good night. Rebecca, Mitch, and Tina B, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Leslie, Kyla, and Samantha, thanks, 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 and good night. Lucas, Anne Marie, and Lauren, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Nick, Adrienne, and Elizabeth, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Joni, Vanessa, and Allie, thanks, 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 and good night. Jasmine, 
uh, Steve and James. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Julie, Samuel, and uh, Susan. Thanks, 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 good night. Boaz, uh, Molly, and Mary Beth. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Jenny, Mariah, and Demir. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Lauren, Haley, and Tori. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Leah, Ruth, and Stacy. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Brianna, Ben, and Stephanie. Uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sleep with Me exists as a free podcast because people that support the show directly and support the show on Patreon. Uh, and we grow as a podcast by people just naturally sharing about the podcast and spreading the word. Thank you so much. And speaking about spreading the word about something, here's something I want you to know about. <laughs>